papers cut up. She may be being stopped in the streets, but it will take more than a photo op and an awkward walkabout for Cressida Dick and the Met Police to improve their reputation. You know my guys? I know them all, they're my regular. Increasingly under pressure, the commissioner announced an independent review into culture and standards at the Met. She said it would be led by a high-profile person with full transparency. Yet Cressida Dick insists that the force is not institutionally sexist. I believe that the Met has instances of sexism, undoubtedly still. Uh, remember, I joined uh, nearly 40 years ago. I've seen it change dramatically, but people have let us down. Questions are being asked about the way in which we deal with violence against women and girls, for example, uh, and very legitimate questions about our standards. Even as those questions continue to be asked about why the Met Police failed to stop Sarah Everard's killer, Wayne Cousins, a second officer from the same unit as him, Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection, has been charged with a sexual offence. PC David Carrick appeared in court this morning, accused of raping a woman he met on a dating app. He was off duty at the time and will deny the allegations. Although the nature of his alleged offence isn't comparable to that of Wayne Cousins, it's added to the damage. What you now see is on Cressida Dick's watch, there has been this, um, it's like a safe haven for sexual predators. I truly believe the Met is institutionally racist and institutionally sexist. We, we have um, people who, who believe that, you know, that they can talk about um, misogyny and sexual offences and violence, like you, you'd hear on the street with a criminal group. And, and that's what's giving the Met, um, in particular, a bad name. Cressida Dick says she's doing her job. She's staying. Um, leaving Cressida Dick at the reins of the Met is like asking Dracula to deal with a blood bank. You know, it, it's that bad. That's how I see it. And I, I don't say it lightly. I actually say it with real pain because there's, for me, I still love the Met. I did 30 years in there and I know there's nothing bad about the Met that can't be dealt with what's good with it. It's just the good people have to start challenge the bad people. Strong words from one former Met superintendent. Yet Cressida Dick has a mandate from the Home Secretary, having recently had her term extended for another two years. The challenge is what she now does to regain public trust. Fatima Manji. Well, now, earlier I talked with the former Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police, Sir Peter Fahey, and to Paige Kimberley. She's a retired Metropolitan Police detective who was hoping to return to the force for part-time work when she joined a colleague's WhatsApp group. She was shocked to see messages she says were graphic, sexual and derogatory to women posted there. She claimed that after reporting them, her job offer was suddenly withdrawn. A tribunal has now ruled in her favour and she's due to be compensated. I began by asking her how she responded when she first became aware of the messages. There were a couple of phone calls and text messages to confirm me going back. And I raised at the first opportunity at this point the, um, the content of this WhatsApp group. I immediately, I was, I was, I had my job retracted, and I was told that there was no position available for me. So, Sir Peter, are you aware of the culture page is talking about? Yes, I think um, you know it's in, almost inevitable um, in policing that you get a whole range of different attitudes, um, and it's you know it's in, almost in the nature of a police force, not only in this country but around the world that it attracts a particular type of person. There's only a certain section of society that wants to do policing. Uh, policing is extremely challenging in what it throws at people. Police officers spend most of their time um, dealing with, you know, the very worst of society, the worst of human nature. It's a very hierarchical, traditional organisation. It struggles to move forward uh, in line with the society outside. And certainly as a police leader, you know, you're constantly conscious of that, you're working with that, you're trying to move the culture forward. But it sounds as if you're saying, and I'm very sorry, but misogynism is a sort of inevitability of having a police force. I think you, there is also inevitability about that policing can do strange things to certain people. Um, and you have to be aware of that as a police leader. And I think most police leaders are. That's why forces are very active counter-corruption units, as well as clearly a huge challenge of social media, that a lot of what police officers are doing is now in closed groups 
Um, and obviously, again, in the context of a, of, a, of a wider society that is divided, that is angry, and itself is trying to cope with different, you know, attitudes towards women and a more sexualized society. I think many people, Paige, thought that when uh, a woman was appointed, appointed to be the head of the Metropolitan Police, that something would change in terms of the culture. I think that what's happening within social media has leaked into policing, into these closed groups. But I, I, what I would say is I don't think this is difficult to deal with. I think if you have a, a, an analogy for me, if, if you have four or five police officers go into a shop and one of them says, let's do some shoplifting, hopefully the other four are going to say, no, that's not a good idea. When you have these images being circulated, I find it astonishing that not one of them, who are ex-senior police officers, um, has not had the common sense to say this is not a good idea. And I raised this as a complaint because I did not want to go back into a working environment where they thought this was OK. So I thought it was reasonable to raise this as a complaint, as something that could be sorted out. What was more shocking than anything was the way that the Metropolitan Police have fought me at every single avenue on my complaint. It didn't seem to me that difficult to deal with. Uh, so, Sir Peter, you were nodding your head at that point. Yeah, because I think often big organisations, including big police forces, um, are defensive. And you've got to continue to try and open up police forces. I think it's great that there are a lot more female chief constables, a lot of more female senior detectives. They're helping to move the culture forward. Um, but at the same time, as I say, you know, society itself is becoming more complex and more difficult. And that's why behind all of this, really, you know, we do need a fundamental look at policing, what we want the police to do. But, Paige, uh, Kimberley, you are in some way detaching the, the human officer from the, the WhatsApp postings. I mean, surely don't those WhatsApp postings uh, reveal the true individual who is a police person? Well, yes, yes, absolutely. And I do think that, um, that once these groups start, they start pushing boundaries with each other. But how on earth does this sort of WhatsApp group uh, be allowed to develop without being challenged by anybody? Um, I, and what has been more disturbing, as I've said, is that I have been fought. I've been discredited. I've been dis lied about. Um, everything to silence me. And it's taken two years for me to actually be heard, to say, and what I was saying was basic, this shouldn't be going on in the workplace. And that's not difficult to deal with. So you Peter, just tell people to stop it. So, Peter, you would sign up to that. I mean, this should not be going on in the workplace. Why is it still permitted to do so? Well, I don't think it's permitted. Uh, and as I, I can only tell you that police forces themselves are really battling with this issue about the use of social media. Um, about negative attitudes and absolutely, as Paige says, making sure that officers feel confident in being able to challenge that and that they'll be supported in challenging and calling that out. So, Peter Fahey, Paige Kimberley, thank you both very much indeed for engaging. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And in response to Paige Kimberley's case, the Metropolitan Police say they are currently assessing the details of the tribunal's finding and cannot comment further at this stage.